Welcome back. We continue our conversation with Dr. Kimberly Barrett, Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion for Lawrence University and Green Bay Police Commander Kevin Warwick. Uh, doctor, on the campus, this uh, Smollett case comes at a time when, as we all know, tensions, racial tensions are, are high across the United States. What's being done on the Lawrence campus to try to bring people together? Are, are you having a problem at all? Well, um, I would say that probably, um, you know, tensions have been um, less high on our campus um, this year, I would say, than they have been in previous years. Really? Why, would, um, why is well, that? Well, we've been making a concerted effort to um, deal with issues of um, diversity, um, differences in perspective, differences in opinions, and how do we in a concerted effort help our students, faculty, and staff gain the skills they need to have these difficult conversations across, um, you know, identities, across politics, um, across all of these important aspects of our, uh, you know, our humanity in ways that are productive. And so we have, um, you know, contracted with a group that is a national organization that does sustain dialogue um, this year. Um, we were looking at the results of a campus climate survey um, that let us know both places where we had, had improved in terms of um, climate on mm -hmm. campus um, and areas where we still need to do some work. And so we've couched that in a truth and reconciliation um, kind of philosophy where we are honest about um, the problems that we have and then try to, to work together to um, come up with solutions that helps everyone have a better experience at our campus. And so faculty, staff, students, um, even community partners have been working with us to really sort of change the way we go about um, interacting with each other, given the world that we live in, because um, it is a very volatile world. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty um, and a lot of tension as the FBI statistics related to hate crimes and the increases we've seen over the last few years um, indicate. You always have a spike during a presidential election but the spike has continued beyond the election um, in this case. And so we have to be vigilant and we're trying to work into the curriculum, um, you know, having processes where people can easily make reports if something happens, um, and then working with um, everybody in the community to make sure they have the skills to deal with these, these issues. And you're playing in a different class of ball on, on the university, on your campus especially, because those are people who are more prone to discuss they are, but we are, we are human like everyone else, and the tensions that affect um, the world and our nation um, affect our students, and they, they come from, you know, all backgrounds and all political, um, despite what people might think, all political persuasions, and so uh, they bring those tensions to campus, but I think we um, do have an advantage in that we are a very small, um, somewhat close-knit community, and I think people are motivated by our sort of shared goal of education um, to approach these things in a different way. And Commander, you folks have to be somewhat of, of psychologists here. What do you do when you see a, a situation which, which could turn bad, let's say, a racial tension situation? How do you diffuse it? Well, police officers wear many hats. You know, some days yeah. they're social workers, some days they're psychologists, some days they're a parent, some days they're an officer, and the list goes on. Um, and, you know, we live in a very great, safe community here in Green Bay. Uh, and when, when things like this do occur, we want people to know they have the right to assemble. Anybody has the right to assemble, we will not prevent that. Um, people have the right to view, express their views and expressions and, and give everybody their opinion. We will stand there. We will be with there. But we want people to be peaceful. People can peaceful stand, do what they need to do, and we will always be there. But when police officers see that, they're going to stand there, they're going to assist, they're going to watch, not get involved because, you know, that's not our job because people can assemble. But if police officers are asked questions, we'll have those general conversations. But we want the community to know that we have community meetings, whether it's at the police department or local churches or at the local Boys and Girls Club. There are different avenues for people to have these structured conversations meaningful conversations with an open dialogue with the police department so that we are here to assist. We are working for them and we want to make sure that we're in cooperation with one another so each other understands each other's views so that we can live, continue to live in a peaceful community. Mm -hmm. Dr. Barrett, what advice do you give to your students on campus who may find themselves in a situation where they think they have been uh, discriminated against, harassed, a, a crime committed against them? 
Well, I think um, tell somebody about it because even if you don't want to pursue it legally, uh, it needs to be documented so we, that we can identify patterns both on our campus, in our you know community, and in the nation so that we can identify these patterns and then try to, to do things to prevent them from happening to other people. So on the one hand, um, please, if you experience anything like a hate crime um, that you suspect might be one, report it through our bias incident responding um, system and or um, report it to the police, whatever the local municipality might be. Things might happen to students when they aren't on campus. Um, but even if you're off campus, you know, that electronic tool is there for you. And I would say use it. Let somebody know, somebody that you're comfortable with. Um, tell them about it so that we can know that it happens. Either of you. Do you think social media has helped to bring us together? Or has social media given us the platform to be able to hide behind it and say whatever we want to somebody? Both and. I would yeah, say both. It goes yeah. both. And, and sadly, we've seen social media used in, in, in some pretty ho horrible tragic ways yeah uh, and but then on the same token you see some great things on social media so just people need to be cautious of you know what they do how they express because that's will cause other people to react to that mm -hmm. um, and we just again we want people just they can express whatever they want but just be peaceful doing so yeah I think social media is a new tool that has great potential for bringing us together but we haven't learned how to use it yet in a way that is very productive, very productive. and so um, you know I always say we're, we have to learn how to use this new tool and not let the tail wag the dog in this instance. All right, Doctor, Commander, thank, thank you, you both very much for being with us this morning. If you have a newsmaker in your town we you think should be on the show, let us know about it. Send us an email at tips at wearegreenbay.com or message us on Facebook. And be sure to join us once again Sunday morning at 730. Until then, have a great day.